Toastmasters and guests. Good evening. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so heroes. Heroes are all around us. Whether they're in film, uh, movies, books, uh, in real life, everywhere, there's always heroes around us. They're, they show us the way. They're like, we look up to them, they're like the beacon of light. Everyone aspires to be like famous heroes. Heroes like Luke Skywalker, Jacinta Ardern, uh, Henry Ford, uh, Princess Diana. All these people are famous, they've done great things, and we all aspire to be like them. One thing you might not know though, is that heroes all have something in common. Back in 1949, uh, Joseph Campbell wrote a book called A Hero with a Thousand Faces. And in this book, he outlines the 17 different phases that go into a hero's journey. These are consistent across every single kind of hero that there is, but they're most commonly found in, in film or book like that. These phases uh, can consist of three main acts, which are the departure phase, or the departure act, uh, the initiation, and then the return. The departure phase. This is where the hero, it's you know, the start of the movie. The hero doesn't really know what's going on. They're a bit shy. And they, then they leave. They leave this uh, place that they're from and they begin the journey. This is like in The Lion King, where Simba, um, you know, his, his dad dies and he leaves the pride and goes on his journey. Or in Star Wars, where Luke Skywalker is asked by Obi-Wan to leave his home planet and travel to Aldera. Or in Harry Potter, where Harry leaves or gets the letter to travel to Hogwarts. These are all scenarios where the hero is asked to, to rise up to something greater than themselves, the initiation. This is also typically accompanied by some kind of mentor or friendship group that allows the hero to step up. The next stage, the initiation. This is really the meat of the story. This is where the hero you know, get stuck into learning more about the world. They get exposed to things that are outside of their previous worldview. They get exposed to new things. So, the Lion King. This is where uh, Simba is travelling through the forest with Timon and Pumbaa, discovering all these things that he never thought uh, existed. This is like Star Wars, where Luke Skywalker is going out to the Death Star. He's, he's rescuing a land, he's seeing clones, he's doing all these amazing things. I'm learning about the force. <laughs> this is like this is like Harry Potter, where Harry Potter is in Hogwarts discovering all these things about magic. He's discovering all these new things he never he never knew existed. And the last phase, the most important, the return. This is where the hero achieves some amazing goal. They do something great. And then they return back to where they're originally from, or they return back to their home base um, as a changed person having undergone some sort of transformation. So the Lion King, Simba, comes back to the Pride, defeats Scar, and rises up as the new leader of the Pride, the new hero of the land. Or in Star Wars, Luke Skywalker blows up the Death Star and returns <laughs> to the River Banks, I'm laughing. Um, <laughs> returns to the River Banks uh, as, a, as a hero of the Rebel, the Rebel Alliance. Or Harry Potter, where Harry defeats Voldemort and returns back to Hogwarts as a, as a, as a new hero. It's pretty incredible. So all these threads, I've just done three movies, but again, these apply to every, well, almost every single movie. And one thing that's well, one thing that's good here is the the transformation that goes on uh, with the character. So Simba is a great example. Starts off the movie as this naive, young, doesn't really know what he's doing. Uh, young boy goes on this huge transformation and returns to the pride as someone that's completely different. He can't you like he, he can't relate to what he used to be like. It's just completely foreign to him. He's undergone this uh, psychological transformation. Uh, and what's important with this with this um, model of, of the hero's journey is that it's not just some technique to apply to like storytelling. Right? It's not like oh, I'm going to write a novel. I better follow these 17 phases and then someone will read it and they'll be hooked and it's going to be amazing. Uh, you know, that's not really what it's about. It's much more than that. 
This is a, a framework by which people analyze stories. This is the way that you relate to stories that happen in real life and in novels and, and stories. And it's a way that you can look at your own life. It's a way that you can look at things that you do and you can frame them in this context of a hero's journey. For example, in my life, uh, next year I'm traveling, we were talking about this before the meeting, but I'm traveling to Melbourne um, next year to begin work. So right now, in the context of the hero's journey, I'm right at the start. I'm in the, just about to get to the departure uh, stage. <laughs> the literal departure stage. <laughs> um, so if you frame that in terms of the hero's journey, I know that there's going to be challenges and things I need to face. Uh, it no doubt will be somewhat difficult to, to, to get used to living it. But I also know that at the end, there's the return. There's the psychological transformation. Okay? There's this you know, new person that will be created at the end of, of, of this journey. So I encourage you all to, to apply this uh, to your own lives. Maybe, uh, actually this does get used in, in, in psychology. If someone's facing trouble, they can frame it in terms of the hero's journey, how they're going through struggle and how that relates to them being the hero of their life, and how, that can, how they can resolve that by, by staying in that frame. So <laughs> I encourage you all to, to uh, look at your life through the hero's journey. Uh, I think it's been very, very useful. Uh, remember that uh, you are the main character uh, of your life. Um, you are the hero of your journey. Thank you. Thank you, James.